Hey you guys, welcome back to Free Ange Free and today we are going to talk about Mr. Robert Williams, an amazing, uh, oh my god, this man was amazing, he was brave and he wrote the book called Negroes with Guns. So that should tell you a little something about him. Stay tuned. <laughs> you guys welcome back okay so mr. Williams let's talk about mr. Williams he was born in 1925 in Monroe North Carolina at the very 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 height of the Jim Crow laws so again Jim Crow, well if you don't know Jim Crow laws separated blacks from whites in public spaces such as the trains buses water fountains, um, restaurants, things like that. Way more. Black people couldn't even try on clothes in certain stores. They had to go through the back if they were going to get something to eat sometimes. They couldn't lodge at different, um, they couldn't lodge at different um, hotels. That's why it was a book called The Green Book and that book was so instrumental for black people to even get decent lodging in, in those times because they couldn't even go to a hotel if they were traveling. So Mr. Mr. Williams was born in 1925 in Monroe. His grandmother was a slave who actually gave him his first gun. So that should tell you how badass she was. So he had two brothers and two sisters. He joined the military. He was a Marine. And he was also president of the NAACP chapter in Monroe in the 50s and the 60s. So, so I I read a lot about this man. He he his bravery in times when, matter of fact, let, let me let me let me let me put this out there. There were a lot of brave people who fought back. They their stories are not told though. That's the that's the thing. But there were a lot of brave people who fought back and Mr. Williams was one of them. And in a time of, especially with the NAACP, Mr. Monroe believed in being self-armed. And he, because of this, because of his belief in being in self-defense, um, it actually did save some lives. So I'm going to tell you a couple of key incidents or accomplishments that he accomplished <laughs> in his life so the first one in 1958 this is called the kissing case two young african-american boys were playing with their white friends so one of their friends asked one of the little white girl to kiss one of them on the cheek so she did and then she kissed his friend on the cheek. They were seven and nine years old, I believe. So the little girl told her parents, and this is kind of conflicting online because I'm not sure if it was her mom or her dad, but she told her parents. And they were very angry about this. And I, they were very angry about this. <laughs> so they told the police, and the police charged these young boys with molestation and put them in a juvenile delinquent home detention center until the age of 21 and even then their fate after that what wouldn't have been known again she kissed them on the cheek they were blamed so the parents the moms were like oh my god our children like what are we going to do you know and mr mr williams stepped right in and he made sure that uh, international attention was brought to this. So what happened was he got Eleanor Roosevelt involved. She tried to talk to the governor. There was it was to no avail. But then what happened was he really really fought. He went to the courts. He did everything to get these two young boys out. So what happened was this case reached international level, where someone from overseas got a hold of this case and wrote about it. And so. Therefore, now Monroe had like public embarrassment, international embarrassment. So this is what happened. So they tried to have the young boy sign a paper that stated that they were guilty, but they were going to let him out. 
And the moms were like, hell no, we're not going to have our son sign anything because they did nothing wrong. And then out of the blue, they just released them. No, didn't t just release the boys. But Mr. Monroe, Mr. Monroe, Mr. Williams was very instrumental in getting those. Okay, so Mr. Williams, he also was instrumental in integrating the public swimming pool and the public library because the kids couldn't even swim. And um, he and some towns people, they, they were going to attack him. And he had his gun and he was able to defend himself and the children that were with him. So he was instrumental in that. So Mr. Mon so Mr. Williams, I keep wanting to say Monroe, but Mr. Williams, that's actually one of my relatives we found in our genealogy. But Mr. Williams also applied at the National Rifle Association, our NRA, the chapter in North Carolina in Monroe. And he actually got 50 to 60 of his men in Monroe to join and to defend the black community. So that was pretty big um, for a black man to have a chapter of the, of, to be in a chapter of the NRA. Also, Mr. Williams, um, so, so this is the Freedom Rider story. So about, so about a group of 10 Freedom Riders came to Monroe and to to protest various issues and what happened was it was on a Saturday and they're protesting downtown and I can imagine a Saturday in a in a in a small town um, it's pretty busy so what happened was these protesters are protesting and the Pete they're bringing attention like what's happening here and what happened was so the residents of Monroe, the ones who were against this, started to crowd crowd around them a little bit. And they were like, okay, they're crowding around us. We're going to keep going. And then the crowd got angrier. To the point it became a mob level. The police weren't doing anything about it. So these kids, these were kids. They're teenagers. They're kids. They're college students. They're like, okay, so <laughs> we're here. And let me tell you what Mr. Williams did. Mr. Williams and other people from the town, they had their guns and someone shot in the air which dispersed the crowd because it was getting to a dangerous level. He, they, someone shoots in the crowd and this is cool. They had taxi cabs, so the taxi cabs pull up to the students and telling them get in get in get in they get into the cabs and mr williams and the rest and some of the other townspeople they saved these kids lives so that to me that was such i love that story i was like oh my god that story is really awesome because these are not the stories we t we hear about in school these we don't hear these types of stories so i was like whoa you know that was so mr monroe wrote in 1962 Negroes with guns and so let me tell you what happened so it was something going on in Monroe in terms with the Freedom Riders and everything like that so a white couple um, because there was a lot of detouring in the town a white couple kind of got stuck in a black neighborhood they were stuck and so Mr. Williams and I believe they had to do with Freedom Riders because Mr. Williams said come come into my home you can stay here until it's safe which they did so what happened was the police charged Mr. Williams with kidnapping so he charged Mr. Williams with kidnapping um, he's also had some run-ins with the KKK so you know it doesn't surprise me that this happened but he had some run-ins I mean, so they charged him with kidnapping. And so Mr. Monroe was like, I'm out. I'm out of Monroe. I'm out of here. So he actually traveled internationally telling the world about the plight of black people in the U.S. And a lot of countries, they, they took notice of it. So Mr. Monroe, 
did that for about because he left in 1960 that happened in 1961 so he came back to the states in 1975 and so um he did have a case it was dismissed i believe and he lived the rest of his life in michigan and mr williams he died in 1996 leaving behind an amazing legacy to tell us that wow you know people really we're out here you know fighting for the basic rights that i have today so i want to thank mr williams because without your bravery i wouldn't be able to be here to tell your story so um thank you guys so much for watching there are lots of articles online there's lots of information online about mr williams um there's documentaries his book has been reprinted several times so you should find so much information out about him so please do your research research this man find out what he was about and until next time i want to thank y'all so much for watching and until next time bye y'all